Hey friends, how's it going? Welcome back. It is so good to see you. I am glad you're here. For those of us that know each other, awesome. Um, but maybe we don't. Maybe somebody sent you this video and you're like, who are you? Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Heather and aside from being a daughter of God and being whoever he wants me to be, however he needs me to be it, I don't really know how else to identify myself. So today I have a really special message that um, that I want to bring to you. And it's something that I have been, that the Holy Spirit's been working out in my own heart. And these are just conversations that I want to open up to you. I really feel like this matters to God. And so I want to share it. This message is for all my sisters out there. No matter what age and stage you're in, whether you're single or you're married, I want you to lean in and listen up. And you're going to want to share this with somebody, some other sister friend in your world as well. Here's the thing, ladies. As women, we are in, we are designed by God in the likeness of his image to be motherly, to be nurturers, to be boo-boo kissers, to be cuddly cuddlers and comfy and, and gentle, and gentle assurers, right? And some of us women, like me, I have really bold personality type, you know, whatever label you want to put on it, Enneagram A, E A N T J, whatever, whatever. I I struggle sometimes because you know, when I evaluate myself, like I don't feel the most sugary and sweet and soft spoken. I just, I show up in, in a different kind of power. Okay. And there are times where I battle with insecurity, especially being a 33 year old woman who is not married and doesn't have kids. Um, I struggle because I wonder if I need to allow Holy Spirit to, you know, kind of mold me and shape me into the image of who he knows that my future husband and kids need to be. I am such an advocate for all people preparing for marriage, okay? If you are, like me, a woman in waiting, a wife in waiting, I advocate for you to understand and to embrace the biblical principles of marriage. But I also understand that there's only so much you can do to prepare, and it isn't until you are in those roles as wife and mom that that God just continues to mold and shape you and your husband and your kids will help mold and shape you into the type of wife and mom that God needs you to be for them. And so it's not an either or. I just want to encourage everyone today. It is an and and both. So whether you're a wife and waiting and you're in preparation, cool, do that. That's awesome. But know that you're not going to be able to walk that out and live that out until you're in that role. And if you're a wife already, know that you're, you're you're constantly learning and we are clay in the potter's hands and we have to allow ourselves and our spouses and our kids to partner with God so that we can be molded and shaped to who he wants us to be. Here's my personal struggle and this is a time of confession and repentance and it's not going to be easy for me but there's no shame and we're just opening up quality conversation. Here it goes. Ready? I truly, genuinely value healthy, strong, biblical, honoring masculinity. I want it. I crave it. I admire it. I think it's needed in this hour. I understand the assault against men in our world right now. I am not hyper-feministic. I believe that we are not to be independent of each other, but interdependent with God. I believe that there's certain masculine and feminine attributes that we need in one another. And that's what I want to break open and talk to you today. My my confession is as I've been allowing Holy Spirit to work on me, as I'm preparing for what God has prepared for me, I am realizing that historically in previous relationships, I have had a tendency to um, kind of devalue any form of weakness that that person showed me. Any weakness or any humanity really, I, I regrettably have been dishonorable, impatient, unkind, um, and sometimes even mean. And I've distanced myself from different men in my life because of that. I have realized in this time of healing that I don't want a man who tries to be a machine or a robot or, you know, is bulletproof. We're all human and I want to be a safe place 
for my husband to be fully human and to let me in, to invite me into those deep levels of intimacy, to express the spectrum of emotions beyond just anger. But I want to be the place where he will allow me into that safe and sacred place that he doesn't allow anyone else into. That is a privilege and an honor for all of us women that no man wants to look weak. No man wants to come before his beloved and, and express um, insecurity or doubt or feel or jealousy or any of those other emotions. And, and the message that I want to give to every woman today is to understand that we as wives or wives in waiting need to embrace our beautiful sacred role that God has um, for us and embrace that femininity, embrace that um, nurturing attribute that we have and partner with Holy Spirit. When our men are coming to us and they're expressing their fears or their insecurities or whatever, that is such a sacred moment. And how we respond or how we react in that moment can really either draw us in closer together or really tear that man down and break our relationships apart. If, if he's bringing to us these different concerns and we're coming back with, I told you so's and well, I tried to warn you and how many times have you been through this? And you know that that controlling kind of manipulative spirit that let's just face it girls like we just need to be honest that we we have it in us and we can't deny that because eve our mother eve in the garden though deceived by the enemy let's not deny the fact that she took matters into her own hands that spirit of control she took matters into her own hands she dismissed and disregarded the leadership of her husband and wanted to do things her own way and she dragged him down in the process not to say that adam doesn't have a responsibility in that he does but i'm just talking about the fact that we as women we carry that with us in our own flesh and in our own humanity but when we allow Holy Spirit to work in us and through us, then we're going to be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to become angry. We're going to partner with Holy Spirit. We are going to echo the voice of Holy Spirit. When that man is feeling weak and wounded and weary, he's getting his butt kicked out by the world. He's uh, maybe a business owner and is uh, a provider and a protector. And he just is carrying a lot of the weight on his world. And he comes home or he comes to us to bring that stuff to us. Don't we want to be that safe place? Even if we're right, don't we want to be that safe place? Don't we want to partner with Holy Spirit and speak life and truth and love into that man? Because as I said, he doesn't want to look weak. Trust me, he does not want to look weak. Now, we're not meant to coddle or to be his mother. Holy Spirit does not coddle us. Holy Spirit convicts us. And not in a condemning way, but in a way that reminds us of our truth and our identity and our righteousness and our power and our authority in God. And when we partner with with Holy Spirit and speak that type, that life over our men, we can watch them emerge and come alive. We don't want to discredit, discount. We don't want to partner with the enemy of accusation and, um, and just, and battery. You know, we, we, <laughs> girls, girls, friends, my sisters, I beg and implore you, man, we have got to learn to embrace the value and encourage healthy biblical masculinity. We have got to commit to allow Holy Spirit to do a work on our heart. If there's any place in our history where men in our history have wounded us or hurt us in any way, have not shown up and, and expressed and modeled for us healthy biblical masculinity, if there's any wounds of our heart, let's allow Holy Spirit to, to fix that and to heal that so that we don't take that in and project that to our relationships in the future so that we don't become disrespectful and dishonoring or manipulative, um, but that we also don't become so nurturing that we mother our men, okay? Unless you're a mom of little boys, even them, we nurture and we grow and we partner with Holy Spirit to empower those young men in the making, right? But when they're our husbands, they don't need a mother. They need a nurturer that's partnered with Holy Spirit that speaks up to them, that honors and uplifts and edifies, does not tear down. 
Yeah, he doesn't need a mother just like you don't want him to be your father. These are critical times that we're in. This is a message of encouragement. I hope this was helpful for you today. I hope you do something with it. I hope you allow Holy Spirit to just let it do something in your heart. Repent where you need to repent. Admit what you need to admit. Ask forgiveness where you need to ask forgiveness. Get to your journal. Get on the floor. Get in prayer. Uh, have an accountability partner. Talk to a girlfriend, a pastor, a coach, a mentor, somebody in your life that'll help you. Again, partner with Holy Spirit and help you become the wife and the mother that you need to be. Our men out there need us, ladies. They need us to show up and be all who God created us to be so that they can be all God created them to be. Let's keep this conversation going in the comments.